Hello everyone, it's Tanya Gabrielle here, Wealth Astrometrologist, and welcome to Star Codes. This is the podcast where we look at an upcoming event in the stars and numbers to help us navigate the energy in the most positive high vibrational way. And in this case, it is the exciting Capricorn full moon with the sun in Cancer. Sun and moon are at 11 degrees. So amazing. This is happening July 3rd. And the time of the full moon is at 12.38 p.m. Universal Time, which is 7.38 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.38 a.m. Pacific Time. So the moon in Capricorn, sun in Cancer, both at 11 degrees, opens the 1111 portal. And in this case, the portal opens into responsibility, especially in your career discipline and also creating a sense of abundance and the reason is that there's a beautiful trine from the moon to jupiter and sextile from the sun to jupiter creating this triangle of joy and abundance so there's a dedication to feeling prosperous feeling empowered through your trust and your commitment to create an abundance of joy in your life, an abundance of fulfillment in your life. So we are going to commit and dedicate ourselves to joy, light, love, everything that brings pleasure. And the love is very important because cancer, where the sun is, governs love and nurturing. So this full moon follows the solstice the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere and winter solstice in the southern hemisphere and that solstice happens on june 21st and it is when the sun enters cancer so then the sun moves around the moon then goes into capricorn and that's how we end up with the capricorn full moon on july 3rd so we are going to focus now on this sign because it is very important throughout the 2020s and that is the sign of Capricorn which includes Cancer being the opposite sign. Why? Because Pluto and Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, were in a stellium to start the decade off if you remember on January 12, 2020 and that stellium was a 500 year event, a major moment and Pluto now has left Capricorn for a few months in the end of March. And on June 11th, Pluto re-entered Capricorn. There's the number 11 again. And now will be in Capricorn until January of 2024. It's moving back and forth over the zero point as it finally makes its way into Aquarius and that will be in November in 2024. That will be in Aquarius for 20 years. So this Capricorn full moon echoes the themes that Pluto just re-entered again a few weeks prior. And that means Pluto is wrapping up unfinished business. What is the unfinished business? It is the purging and transforming of structures, ideas, beliefs, that are based on a time that is no longer relevant now as we move into the Aquarian age. So Pluto is finalizing, purging, transforming, ending the direction of what people basically thought their goals need to be, the expectations put on them, the ambitions that they thought they needed to focus on, uh, life choices and responsibilities that so many have taken on that actually now don't apply anymore they they are not elevating us anymore so this is a very important moment and it is made even more important by a very powerful figure that is being created in the heavens during this capricorn full moon and that figure is called a trapeze or a cradle and it is truly a remarkable moment because a cradle is where a baby is placed for sleep, for nurturing. So it's connected to cancer, the sign of the mother. And then it is also a protection mechanism, a secure 
mechanism and Capricorn is about security so we have in the cradle represented both signs Capricorn where the moon is and Cancer where the sun is so how is this trapeze or cradle created well there's a triple sextile that moves from the sun conjunct mercury so both those planets they're merged together in cancer to jupiter which creates that beautiful trine that triangle i mentioned and then jupiter sextiles saturn the ruler of capricorn and then saturn creates a sextile to the moon the ruler of cancer so powerful powerful crater there is a sense of many timelines intersecting just like this cradle intersects and i've marked it up for you you can see here where the yellow lines are superimposed on the actual aspects between the planets which are either blue green or red depending on the aspect i put the yellow lines to show you the actual cradle itself which rests on the opposition the red line which creates that tension and then the sextiles and the trines create beautiful harmony so there's a lot of intersection of timelines of ideas that are being discussed that are being uh, really looked at in a closer way and also the intersection means can we bring together opposite beliefs opposite directions ideas and cradle them into one place where we are all listening to each other and feel secure in the acceptance and respect that we give each other which is very connected to capricorn and cancer so we're taking authority of what we find without judgment and thereby finding that inner peace that we all so crave and so that means accepting the truth as it appears not judging it or wishing it away but actually just listening to other perspectives accepting it dealing with it moving on not wasting energy or time these are all capricornian themes building a strong structure that can withstand anything like the cradle of humanity it it really requires deep committed passion and effort to get to this place where you feel both secure and loved without taking away the freedom of expression so the metaphor for capricorn being an earth sign is that it deals with facts it doesn't get emotional and then cancer deals with the feelings and so now we want to come together looking at facts what is actually happening without the emotional interpretation and then turn to the true nature of our feelings which are based on compassion and nurturing as opposed to drama so if there are any opinions assumptions judgments evaluations fantasies wishes these are not facts right these are actually fiction they're a particular point of view that's coming from a belief system that creates those judgments that creates an escapist tendency an idealized version of yourself which is the false self and the false self doesn't exist so now we're being asked especially with pluto back in capricorn to look at ideas that are manufactured from that programming which capricorn represents capricorn symbolizes the programming that we took on that was imposed on us in order to support the structures the leaders at the top who needed a belief system to be in play for them to continue their place and not open up the dynamics for discussion for uh, a sense of give and take that is based on wisdom and respect so our conditioning is part of this programming and we need to now look at everything that is deemed imposed on us as opposed to arrived from your soul arrived from a place where there is absolute 
uh, a visceral feeling of joy, of peace when you come across the truth itself. Because truth is never based on fear, it is just based on discovery and inspiration. And when you feel that way, then whatever it is that you choose to believe is based on reality. It's based on a true internal discovery that brings joy, liberation, wisdom, and inner peace. And so this is really the key theme of this beautiful full moon, having this joyful aspect to Jupiter, which represents wisdom and represents a sense of reality bringing joy because the Jupiter theme, the Sagittarian Jupiter theme is also about law and order. And so there is this sense of natural law, divine law, not so much uh, human law, which may be based on that programming, though that also needs to be fulfilled in the 3D reality. But the natural law and the divine law that Jupiter represents in this gorgeous trine and sextile is something for us to turn to. And because Capricorn is an earth sign, we are turning to natural law, nature. We are observing nature and seeing the intersection of ecosystems, intersection of plant life, intersection of the, the four seasons and how they transition from one to the next and accept the changes. These are all natural laws that we are now partaking in in order to really be there, be in a place of advantage and be in a place where our dreams really can manifest because they're based on natural law. They're based on our natural sense of destiny. So one thing that would be good around this full moon is to spend time in silence, in solitude, in quietude, earth, being outside or being in a place where you can imagine yourself in a forest or on the ocean or on top of a mountain or hiking, swimming in a lake, smelling the flowers, acknowledging the beautiful wildlife. Those are all really important. You know, the mountain goat represented by Capricorn climbs the mountain and chooses paths that seem impassable and makes it to the top. So Capricorn is about focusing on what actually is going to yield successful outcomes. So you want to take charge. You want to take charge of having a clear vision, not a muddled system that is based on old beliefs, again, that were programmed from day one. We want to take how we feel, cancer, how our heart is guiding us and nurture that and love that and think in a caring way, be kind, be generous, share our heart and be completely immersed in the discipline of those qualities, those frequencies, kindness, nurturing, compassion, diligence, discipline. You know, Cancer and Capricorn are signs that begin seasons. They're called cardinal signs. And the cardinal signs are signs of action. So when we have a cardinal full moon or new moon, we are propelled into even more action. And the Cancer new moon is coming up later in July. So we have these moments now between the solstice on June 21st, the Capricorn full moon, in early July and then the Cancer New Moon later in July to really go into that place of being proactive and to remember that your spiritual mastery is the mastery of the moment. So that 1111 that we started talking about at the beginning of this podcast, that 1111 is the gateway of the present moment. So the more present you are feeling and getting inspired Sometimes we are in situations we don't know what to say. We're confronted with a dramatic uh, conversation or 
we are at a crossroads and don't know where to turn. And those are particularly the moments where we're being made aware to not go here, but to go here, to go get grounded, to put our feet on the ground. We are like the 11. We have two legs. We have two arms. We have that 11 in us. That is the present moment master number of intuitive awareness. Intuition and inspiration in spirit is exactly where spiritual mastery comes. 11 is a master number of spiritual mastery. So it's a fantastic time for you to just focus on that present moment and also to partake in a free masterclass I have that focuses on spiritual mastery. It's called How to Master Your Stars and it's a free training that literally shows you how to take your power back by being in that present moment. You can watch it at spiritualmasteryclass.com. We focus on the secrets of spiritual mastery, the true meaning of your rising sign, your natal sun and natal moon's profound impact on living an abundant and happy life, and the important difference between individuality and uniqueness, right? The individuality is the old way, the uniqueness is the new way, it's the way of the Aquarian age. We focus on how to connect instantly with spirit and many more secret tools. So enjoy that free masterclass at spiritualmasteryclass.com. Have a beautiful Capricorn full moon, and I will see you in next week's Star Codes podcast. Lots of love.